Hello everyone. I hope everyone's having a great day. Today we're going to be discussing the three different climates or areas that we just love to boondock in. Each one's a little bit different. And just so you know, we have a 36 foot tag along that we pull with the F-250. And we have solar panels on, on top of the RV. And we also have a Harbor Freight Predator Generator 3500, which works really good. And it's very quiet. And if you stick around to the end of the video today, I will explain to you how we are able to travel in Boondock part of the year and work the other part of the year. Because unfortunately, we still have bills that we have to pay. However, the job I'm going to, to discuss is very easy and anyone can do it. I mean, it, you pretty much don't have to have no, no um, skills. Anybody can do it. But stick around to the end of the video and I will tell you what it is. So let's get into the three different areas that we love to boondock in. This is at Arizona around Corpsite area. I think it was Roadrunner BLM land. Now there is a bunch of campers out here which you will see. But most of them you can, if you want to be safe and secure, you can stay right off the road. If you want to, don't want anybody around you, you can go back for miles. You see this group right here that's in a circle like a, an old um, chuck wagon? Well, they was all together. When you see that, they are all traveling together. They do that so they have a large area so nobody can move in on them. Which, they was all very nice. You know, they, they had been traveling together for months. You know, so they just absolutely love traveling. And that's why they like that. They all would have a fire every night out there in the middle and just have a good old time. You know, lots of these people that's right close together, they was all traveling together. Now, granted, some of them was not, but you can pretty much be as close or as far as away from anybody that you wanted to. And this is so much things to do in courtside. you got to go to the big tent in January. You see, right there is the main road. You can see they're right there, right, just right off the road. I mean, there's not, there's not, you know, they're only about 100 foot off the road. And that was off of Highway 95. And you can see that there's this, you, there was campus as far as you could see. There ain't no telling how many hundreds of thousands of RVs. But you can see there's still plenty of room because these, most of these had at least 100 foot between RVs. Some of them was closer. And yes, yeah, some of them ran generators and some of them did not. I think when it comes to generators, you have to make your own decision. You know, if I need to run my generator, even though I have solar panels, if I need to run my generator, I'm going to run it. You know, so I usually try to park away from, from people so we ain't right on top of somebody. But when it gets cold, you know, you have to have a heat. You know, and the solar panels do not do, will not run a, the big heater on, on this travel trailer. But this is a great time, but you got to keep in mind with this boondocking in, in Arizona, you're not really close to anything. Yeah, you got court site, but, but there ain't many towns around where you're just going to go and it's not a tourist area. You're going to go out there and you're going to hang out with your friends, you know, you're going to camp, you're going to have fires, you're going you're gonna to meet a whole bunch of new friends that you're going to gonna meet that's just real nice. We did not meet anybody that was not not nice. But you know, you're out there in the desert, you know, you can pretty much, there's pretty much anywhere on 95 in Arizona, you can boondock. You know, but but you just have to be safe. You can see there's, there's defined roads where people has, has driven out there so much that they actually have defined roads. You can see all the all these campers coming up. I mean, they was just it actually looked like an RV park at some points. But you can go back like 15 miles off of off of this this main road off of 95 where all these campers was. You can go back like 15 miles. The farther you went back, the fewer and fewer people you've seen. You know, and you had people in big big class A's uh, schoolies that was that was transformed into an RV some people living in cars that had tents that they that they was in you know it was a wide range 
you know, when it comes to boondocking, I think you have to do what you like to do as far as boondocking goes. You know, but for us, we like our travel trailer. We still like the, 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 the comforts of home. You know, our RV has a fireplace in it, the TV. You know, and, but you know, I, I'm also uh, amazed at some of these van builds you can see on YouTube that just looks awesome. And I mean, they're small. And I'm no small fella, you know, I'm six foot three, 250 pounds. But still, some of these, some of these, bus conversions and cars that they do and, and Priuses and schoolies are just interesting. Look at all these RVs. I mean you could see RVs just as far as you can see. I mean, this this is, and there's still plenty of room. You know, don't let anybody tell you, oh, well, don't go because it's overcrowded. You know, no, if you want to go, I mean, it's a great time to go, and, and it's free camping. It's, you can stay 14 days, and then you have to move 25 miles away. But it's just, it's just, it's just a big community. You know, we went to the we went to the RTR with Bob Wells, uh, and it was it was it was a great time. This is the Imperial Sand Dunes close to El Centro, California. We love this place because the dunes are beautiful. They have ATV and UTV. However, it does cost $35 a week to stay here for seven days. But it has a bunch of UTVs and, and ATVs that goes up and down these sand dunes. So on the weekends, it gets really loud. However, if you go through the week, like Tuesday or Wednesday, it's not that bad, but it's it's really fun. I mean, it is loud. you got lots of people running generators, uh, but we still love it. I mean, the, the, the views are breathtaking. We actually got to do a ride on, on a sand rail. A guy that had spent like $80,000 on a sand rail, and man, that was a ride like a roller coaster, one of the best roller coasters you've ever been on. However, the wife did not like that. She said, no, thank you. But we, we just absolutely loved it. I mean, it's, it's great. you got Border Patrol right there that they actually take their UTVs up because you're close to the border. You're, close, you're within probably two miles of the fence going down towards Mexico. However, we, you know, we, we did not have no problems. Now, you do have lots of dust and lots of sand blowing, but it was still well worth, well worth the $35 to stay here. This is South Texas on the Gulf of Mexico at Port Arnas. Pretty much from the time you enter Texas on the Louisiana border all the way down to Brownsville, Texas, you can camp and boondock on the beach. I mean, you're just steps away from the, from the water. Now, Bolivia Flats up around Houston, you have to worry about the tide coming in and out on you. Port Arnas, not so much because the tide never really came up. But, I mean, what's not to like about being on the beach I mean to me that's just the smoke to be able to stay on the beach and you know do all the things like kayak and and just walk up and down the beach I mean there's just something about being on the beach but we absolutely love being able to camp on the beach in Texas just all the way the whole coastline of Texas you can camp on the beach pretty much and you can drive on it now, you do have to have a sticker in some counties where you, it's like a three-day limit on camping, but it's, it's just great. However, when you stay here, you do want to make sure that when you leave that you wash off your rig and your truck underneath really good because it will get lots of salt water on it. But, I mean, we just absolutely love it. And they have huge kites. These kites are probably 80 foot long. I mean, and I mean, the view, look at that view. I mean, you just can't get no better than that.
We're almost to the part about the job that I was talking about at the beginning of the video. Just just a little bit longer and we'll be discussing how to make a lot of money with a little bit of work. Well, thanks for sticking around. The job I was talking about is being a gate guard in the oil fields in South or West Texas, and they have some gates in Colorado and New Mexico, some in Oklahoma, and some in Texas. The average pay is one fifty to two fifty per day for you and your wife. But what's good about it is you pull your RV right to the gate. And when you're on the gate, they pay for everything. They have a generator that they, they provide the fuel for, uh, all the water. So all you have to do is sit out here in the oil field and make, if you're making $150 a day, you know, you are bringing home, you and your wife, 1050 a week total. And, and it, but the other thing about, about that is in the 24 hour, you have to work 24 hours a day. However, on the gate that we're at right now, they're drilling four different wells. But most gates, you walk, you have to walk an average of three to four hours a day that you're actually checking somebody in, unless you're on a frack gate, which that's a whole different story. But, um, you know, it's really easy to do. It pays good. You know, you just don't want to be out in South Texas too much in the summertime because it gets really hot. One day it was 116 degrees. But it's very simple to do. Uh... You do have to take a six-hour class. You do have to have an RV, but sometimes they have a just a sack where you can actually, uh, you and your wife can both work in a sack, but you have to pay for your own RV site. It may be up to 25 to 30 miles away. But I mean, it's just a really easy job that you you get paid to be bored because there's nothing to do out here. You're in the middle of Right now, we are an hour and a half from Laredo, Texas. That's the biggest town. And if you want to run to Walmart, it's a 30-minute ride just to get to a small Walmart that has no food in it. So you're out here in the middle of nowhere. So you've got to have plenty of things to do, whether it be read books, watch TV. Uh, you're just, you've got to have something to preoccupy your time with. But it's very easy to do. You, know, you just got to call around to gate guard companies. There's several of them that that, that does it, and uh, they will help you get your license, and then you can come and do it. And they're always looking for help in the oil field. But, you know, it's, it's really easy, and you know, all you got to do is pretty much you have to guarantee that you'll work for like 30 days, and after that, you know, you just have to give them notice that, okay, well, you know, I'm going to leave in a month because I want to travel. So like I said again, it is gate guard and it's very it's probably the easiest job I've ever had. So check it out if you want something easy and you know you you don't you know you don't really have to it's not very strenuous. You have to you use a tablet to check people in and out. But you do have to be here twenty four hours a day, seven days a week until the gate closes. But what's good about like the gate we're on now is they feed us every night. You know, so we don't have no food either. You know, so that cuts down your bills. You you have no bills out here. You have no water bill, no no power bill, no fuel bill. You know, they just they just pay for everything. They give you anywhere from one hundred and fifty to two hundred fifty dollars a day. So if that's something that might interest you, you might want to check it out because it is it's well worth the the, the check out to 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 do it. And again, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day, and I'll see you next time. God bless you.